reaching out real quick about the 2018 Yamaha Star Venture Transcontinental. Uh, two speakers in the front, two speakers in the back. Um, pretty much what I did find out by ripping my whole bike apart. There was a, in the manual it says that the front speakers, I think it says 5.5, back speakers 5.25. Well, lo and behold, the easy ones in the back are 5.25. Um, so what I did is I ended up getting the Poke coaxial speakers. They're the DB522, I think, um, for the back. And then for the front, I did the matching speakers, um, the 6.5 inch in the front. That's what it turned out to be, perfect fit. Both sets of speakers. I had to bore out lightly with the drill bit. It was plastic, super easy. Uh, just have to go slow, but um, to get the factory bolts back in, that's all you have to do, and they fit uh, perfect. So they sound awesome. Um, what I did do, though, when I, after I pulled it all apart, I decided to run the SoundStream amp, which is cheap, 140 bucks on Crutchfield. Uh, and then I just want to bring a couple of things to attention to this thing while I'm here. Um, this amp, according to the manual and according to the printing on the amp itself, this is the uh, ST4-1200D. So this is 4 ohms uh, or 2 ohms. But I'm running 4 ohms. All the poke are 4 ohm. I'm running 4 channel. I tried to um, split the channel, uh, tried to connect just the back two speakers to the all four inputs for the high pass, and then try to uh, branch that out to all the speakers so I had two less speaker wires running through the bike. Um, that did not work. I talked to them. They didn't know, know why. They just said you have to run all four. Um, they also did tell me that I had to run the remote, which is not true says in the instructions you don't um, so the remote wire is not necessary on this model the, um, the speakers input uh, is enough to turn it on uh, but that being said so you do have to run inputs from all four channels to get it to turn on automatically I imagine if you wanted to cut in a remote you could do one of these uh, quick connectors <clears throat> into your fuse box um, and then run that to the remote and you could just test it with one of these guys um, one of the small lights that grounds out uh, you ground it and then you just touch the fuse and then you can see what's on and off but most of the, all the um, fuses under the seat which would be the easiest to get to are gonna all turn on with the switch on so you could use that if you want a remote if you need a remote for um, a different kind of amp I would uh, say so you probably have to trim a little bit off the cover just to get it to close tightly but it wouldn't be a problem um, all right so back to where I was so I'm gonna give you an example right now this stood out to me and they said I was wrong so I am literally not impressed I was not impressed then telling me I'm wrong not super friendly person um, but yeah so for instance you look at this wiring harness that comes with this this is output. This goes on the side. And it's hard to tell with my phone, but... So, the top left is negative, right side. Bottom left is positive. So, keep that in mind. So, this is facing the direction where you'd plug it in. So, you see the clip is on the bottom? That plugs right in there. You go and look at these green wires. So if you're talking again, the top left is negative on the rear left. And then you go over to this diagram that came with them. And you look at the negative on the rear left is green, which should be the top left. Well, lo and behold, it is not. It is green. Hold on. Is green with a black stripe. Oh, there it is. So you can see it maybe going in top left. So that's the positive going into the negative. So these two, the green and the violet, 
which are the rear right and rear left, positive and negative, they are switched according to what is printed on the amp itself. So usually what you can do is you can pop them out with a tiny flathead or maybe a safety pin, something. I chose not to. I'm just switching them. I don't want this freaking thing to get torn up. Uh, it's plastic. Um, and then on the other side, on the input, which look how thin this wire is. Oh, let me, all right, so the input and the output. Input is super thin. Output's not bad. Output's close to what I ran. The whole bike minimum, all my speaker wire is that. So we're talking triple, double. I don't know what the insulation, the difference is um, compared to the wire itself. But I mean, this is thin stuff. This is for all four channels input is how thin that gets. Um, and, oh yeah, so what I was going to point out to you is on these ones were crossed, but I fixed these ones. Uh, all right, there you go. Well, not really. All right, so if you see these pins, you can put those pins down with a tiny point. You pull them out, switch them. All set, nice and easy. Um, so I had to switch six wires around. That isn't going to be... As far as I know, I could be 100% wrong, but I think that it is going to create distortion in your speakers, or at least, if nothing else, it's going to strip the bass out. Um, if I didn't notice that, and I started running 100 watts RMS to these four brand new pokes, and something bad happened because of a factory wiring, because they couldn't take the time to pay attention, I'd be pissed. Um, so for that reason alone, I would say not to get this amp, because, I mean, risking freaking... Hundred and whatever, eighty dollars and hundred sixty, hundred and eighty dollars speakers for a hundred and thirty, hundred forty dollar amp. Um, it would suck because if you had to replace everything, it would be terrible. Um, and then even if you go to the power, if you just so you know, for this amp, this quick, um, this harness rather. So it's hard to tell, but I already bundled them. So you have two negatives or grounds, I should say, two red power main. And then the blue remote. I cut the remote. I'm going to cap it with some tape or something. Um, so you can look how thin that's going in. So it's two of them. You splice them together. And then what I did is I just put an inline crimper. And then I shrink wrapped it. The tape on the right just represents. That's a negative. Because that, my ground was too short. So I just ran some extra power cable. Both of it 8 gauge. Good stuff. Um, and then that, I mean... It does split it between two, but that's still pretty thin, I would think. Whereas if this amp didn't have these harnesses, I'd be running that 8-gauge straight to the terminal. Um, maybe with just uh, some type of con uh, quick connector I'd crimp on there. But, I mean, it would be a lot thicker, a lot um, better. And then with the inputs, too, I mean, I would never use stuff this thin. I put quick connectors on these guys, and that barely, I mean, I had to double it up just to try to get a better grip on it. These are the blue, the smallest crimp items that I use, or I have. Um, so I'd be wary of that. But yeah, most importantly, if you have a Yamaha Star Venture, Transcon with the back, two speakers as well. The front two are six and a half inches. The back two are five and a quarter. Um, and as you can see, I actually ran through the back. I used the pre-existing holes and the grommets to run the power and the speaker wire into the trunk. Um, I didn't want to drill into the back bags. I didn't want to risk losing any of the waterproof feature if I screwed up or the silicone didn't set well or whatever. So I just did this. Um, I probably reckon, I'm going to have to, I'm actually going to Velcro it to the side after I get it all tightened up so it doesn't take too much space out of here. Um, but yeah, if you're worried about space, I would go in the saddlebag. There's plenty of room in the saddlebag. And I imagine if you're like me, you use this trunk all the time just because it's perfect height. Um, so, yeah, I'd be careful with that. And, uh, yeah, the other last note is make sure you have four inputs into this high input amp if you use this one. Because a two is not enough to turn it on and get it running. So, yeah, I had trouble with that. I've, I've split before and had no trouble um, so I don't necessarily know why this one was like that. Maybe if you did just run the two rear channels and then ran a remote, uh, maybe that would get it going. 
I actually, no, I did try that briefly and I had no output. So I don't know what the hell happened. Um, but as of now, it sounds awesome. I'm ha it's a little finicky. Once in a while, it turns on, but it's not pushing out. Um, so I'm assuming that's going to be the amp. So I would say I'm probably going to have to switch it up. Um, Rockford Foskett, going to go from 140 for this one to 400 for that one. Um, but I mean, I'm imagining that if you're going to have a bike, a new bike, and you want a long-lasting amp setup that you don't ever want to mess with, that will probably be my route next. So, all right, good luck, and uh, I hope this helped a lot, or helped a little at least, because that 6.5 in the front is... Uh, it's crazy that on the paperwork for these bikes it says 5.5, which doesn't really exist. So, all right, have a good one.